Jeremiah 3, it says in 15, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The Lord said we give you pastors according to his own heart, man. That, that heart of righteousness, that heart of understanding, that heart of, uh, of, of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, man. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, man. And, and those men are gonna be out here on the highways and byways, right, like we are, like men of GMS, Great Millstone, right? And any brother who came under that banner that's still pushing that truth. Because some brothers came under Great Millstone and they're not pushing that truth, they're changing the doctrine to be something else. So those are not the pastors that the Lord is sending, man. You know? Uh, Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25 and 4. And it says, And the Lord Yahweh have sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. Right? So we out here, it says, it says, uh, Rising early, so we out here on the we out here on the highways and byways, man. Right? We out here pushing this truth, man. Why? Because the destruction hasn't happened yet. So we come out diligently, week in and week out. Brothers making videos, brothers uh, getting together, fellowshipping together, making videos. You see, you see the, all these other uh, accounts where brothers are doing, uh, you know, just quick hits, man. Just pushing this truth, the uh, the best way. The Spirit lead us to know how, man, to get this information out here, man, to flood this storm in the Euro, man. And it says, they said, turn ye again, now every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings and dwell in the land of Yahweh that, the, that Yahweh have given unto you and to your fathers forever and ever. And who that's talking about? To the nation of Israel, man. It's a people before it's a place, man. When you read 2 Maccabees uh, uh, 5 and 19, it tell you that Israel is that people before it's a place, man. And it says, verse 6, and go not after other gods to serve them. It says, go not after the other gods to serve them. But what do our people do, man? They serve uh, uh, Islam, they serve Buddha, Scientology, Egyptology, uh, Semiramis and Tammuz, man. And the scriptures plainly tell you not to serve those other gods, man. But that was one of the curses that we read in Deuteronomy, we just read in 64, that you was gonna be put in a land to serve the other gods that you and your father have not known, man. And it says, uh, verse 7, it says, I read 6 again, And go not after other gods to serve them, and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Right? So the Lord said, if you basically follow his commandments, he'll do you no hurt, man. But what do our people do every year around this time, man? They're gonna go cold hard, they're gonna go hard on uh, buying candy for Halloween. They're gonna go hard in the stores trying to buy all these ingredients to try to make a, a, a turkey dinner. And then they got Christmas coming up, man. They, they're going hard, they're worshiping. I, they're idol worshiping, man. Exactly what the Lord told you not to do and gave you specific instructions on what not to do, man. It tell you in Ezekiel that our people are rebellious, man. They're uh, stiff-necked people, man. Man, that's why when the Lord comes, man, he's gonna come, hey, man, he's gonna tear you people up, man. Uh, this is Isaiah. Isaiah 6.
Uh, Isaiah 66 and 15. It says, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots, right? Like a whirlwind. It's going to be a whirlwind. It's like a tornado, man. And you know when, when, a, when, a, when a whirlwind comes, what do you do? You run and hide, man. But you're not going to be able to hide from Yahweh's side. He's going to come with the chariots, man. He's going to come with fire, man. He's going to be shooting those laser beams from the chariots, man. And it says, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with the flames of fire. So we out here right now telling you to get right and to repent. Because we know when the Lord rebukes, man, it's going to be over, man. It's not going to be, it's not going to be time for you to try to get right then. Because he said he's rebuking with flames of fire, man. Isaiah 63. And this is how serious it's going to be. This is Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Right? Yahweh Shai, man. It says, that is, that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And the greatness of his strength is going to be the angels. In, the, in those chariots, man. They're going to be coming from one end to the other, man. That's the greatness of his strength. You know? And it says, I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. It says, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Right? So it's saying he's red in his apparel. Why? And thy garments like he have treaded in the wine fat. So it's going to look like the Lord actually uh, went into a, a wine press and stomped grapes, man. Because if you go into a wine press and you step on grapes, the, the, uh, the juice from the grapes are going to stain your clothes, man. Which is symbolizing of the blood of the, uh, of the uh, sinners in, in America, man. And in other parts of the world. Verse 3, I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment. And I will stain all my raiment. So the Lord is going to, hey man, it's, he's telling you. He's getting ready to, to uh, come down and, and do a number in America, man. He said he's going he, he to do it alone. This is his rebuke. It's, it's rebuke, man. Right? It's going to be these flames of fire, man. And it says, uh, verse 4, and it says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem is come. So he said the day of vengeance is in his heart. Right? Vengeance, man. That's that's when you when you when you get ready to, to basically trample and kill somebody. When you're doing overkill, man. He said that day is in his heart, man, and it's coming. That's why the scriptures say uh, uh, a way to righteousness, man. You know? That's why it's a high time to wake up out of sleep. Because you don't know that when that time when that time that the Lord is going to make his uh, 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 appearance, man. You don't want to be caught slipping, man. Like when a thief comes into your house, man, you don't want to be caught off guard. It says, verse 5, And behold, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my arm... Mine own, mine own arm of salvation unto me, and my fury, it, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth, man. So the Lord is getting ready to destroy the people and these governments, man. He says he's going to make them drunk. And you know when a man is drunk, he staggers around, he can't walk straight, he might even fall down. So that fury that the Lord is going to bring is going to knock these nations to the ground, man. This is uh, 
Revelations 19. Revelations 19 and 11. And it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Right? And, and a horse symbolizes symbolize a power. And it says, And he set, and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true. Right? And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Right? So that faithful and true is who? Yahweh Shai, man. Right? And it says, In righteousness he doth judge and make war. Done. And it says, His eyes were as a flame of fire. Right, which describes that describes it in uh, Genesis the 49th chapter, and it describes in Revelation 1 and 15. It says, and his head and on his head were many crowns, really meaning he's going to take down these nations, man. That's what he said. He's gonna bring bring he gonna bring everybody to the ground, man. He's gonna take down these nations, man. He's gonna take their honor and their glory and their authority, right? He says, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And when you go into that himself, it means the same. We are in one accord to the same spirit with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, so therefore we're gonna know that name. We confess that name, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. Like he tell you in Second Ezra's, man, the crowns are gonna be put up, the crowns and palms are gonna be given to the ones who have, he said, confess their name in the earth. So if you're not confessing that name, then no, you're not gonna receive those crowns and palms, man. You're gonna receive death, man. And it says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him Followed, followed him upon white horses. Who are those armies? Those are the chariots. Those are the angels. They're going to be following Yahweh Shai, man. And it says, clothed in li fine linen, white and clean, meaning they're going to be pure. A purity, man. And it says, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he shall smite the nations and shall rule them with a rod of iron. So out of his mouth gonna go a sharp sword. Meaning what, those laser beams, man, coming from the chariots, man. That's out of his mouth go a sharp sword. And those, those laser beams are going to knock the nations to the ground, man. And it says, um, and, he, and, he, and, and he treaded the wine press as the fiercest of the almighty power. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, kings of kings and lords of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven, come gather yourselves together until the supper of the great power. Because it, it, when, when, it, when the war starts, they're gonna be in the land of Harmagatwa, which is over there in the Middle East. It's gonna be so much death over there to the fowls are gonna feast, man. That's gonna be a literal feast for the fowls of the air. Even, even over there and here in America, man. And it says, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and them that sat on them, and the flesh of men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So that's NATO, right? They're going to make war in the Middle East when Yahweh Shai come back. They already gonna be at war, and when Yahweh Shai comes back, they're gonna turn to fight against him, man. That's how scared they're gonna be in that day. They're gonna turn to fight against the Lord and the chariots, man. And it says, 
and the beast was taken with him, the false prophet, and that Roth miracles, right? Bringing the chip before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, the RFID microchip, and them that worship his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. These are thermonuclear destruction, man. Because you go into brimstone, it goes into sulfur. And sulfur is a, is a burning cleansing agent, man. Even when, they, when the archaeologists digged over there where Sodom and Gomorrah was, they found uh, sulfur 